I deliberately don't want to do tic-tac-toe because I did it last year and I've got the videos for that. So let's pick something else that's kind of in that sort of vein. Uh, one thing I was kind of thinking was um, that we could do is um, – so in Mario 3, uh, did I mention what happens when you hit the, the spade? Yeah, it's one of the other mini games. And which one is that one? And maybe I've got it and the Toad House mixed up. You guys remember? So it's like a matching game. So there's like a, a, a row of like 16 cards or whatever, like, um, or however many cards there are. And there's... It's one of those memory matching games, so it you get to flip over a card, and then you get to flip over another card, and um, you get so many chances at this, but then the idea is if they match, then those two cards are removed, and if they don't match, they flip back over, and you get to go again, but only a certain number of times, okay? Uh, and so then you get to flip over another one and then try and match it uh and you know obviously are you going to flip over let's say that your first two cards do not match for your third flip are you going to flip one of those same two again heck no that would be really stupid okay but let's say that like the first thing you flip over is a star the second thing you flip over is a mushroom okay and then they fight each other and then you sort of randomly choose and the third thing you pick is a mushroom well then what do you better do for your fourth pick the mushroom that you already found right and uh let's say it's different like let's say your third thing is a fire flower well, then you just basically at the beginning of the game you're sort of choosing randomly but after enough you flipped over enough cards uh, then you should start to see repeats, and of course you want to find and match them with uh, with with their other uh, thing. Um, and so, in fact, while we're at it, let's just pull the pull a video up of that mini game. Um, and uh, there's actually some people who have way too much time in their hands that have figured out the algorithm that generates these, and by testing a certain set of cards. Uh, you can tell immediately. Um, so let's see. We want Mario 3 card game. Perfect. Okay, so let's get our through our stupid ad. And if I see one more of these ads for either Hero Wars or this stupid, like, um, like Top War or something, you, you guys been seeing these things? They're all the same. They're all pay to win in the sense that you have to, like, wait around a whole lot. Um, and with the Hero Wars one in particular, like, their ads aren't anything like the game from what I understand, which is, like, yeah. So, yeah, if uh, we could nuke these people from orbit, that'd be great. Okay, so yeah, so there's some people that have actually figured out all of the different patterns of the different card layouts that you can get, but here's sort of the point of the game. Okay, so this one's a little bit ridiculous because he just sort of insta did it. Okay, obviously, when you would play this thing for real, you wouldn't necessarily know where to go. Um, okay, so what do we have here in terms of the cards? There are, it looks like, four of each of the different symbols, okay? And uh, with the exception of the one-up treasure chest, there's only two of those, okay? Um, and they're basically randomly, you know, thrown out it's though it's not truly random in the nintendo's case um and uh well i guess the coins there's only actually two of each kind right because there's a 10 and there's also a 20 those are separate um and let's see every do we have everything else covered here right so how could we program something like this
you know, what, what kind of things do we think we need, uh, we would need for it? Yeah, okay. So we need 18 sprites, okay, and uh, some sort of random number generator, but it can't be completely random in the sense that um, how many mushrooms do we need here? Four, precisely four, okay. Uh, and so what we would need to do is make sure that our randomization kept that in mind, okay. That let's say that, for example, um, that, uh, and we could do this where you have two of nine different symbols instead of this. Uh, obviously, this is maybe a little bit easier uh, because with four mushrooms, you know, the, the odds of you finding a mushroom on sort of a random shot are good enough that after a couple of attempts, you should be able to start matching things, right? Um, okay, so we'll just sort of program it, I guess, sort of classic Mario style where we've got what? Four mushrooms, four uh, flowers, four stars, and then two 20 coins, two 10 coins, and two one-up treasure chests. Okay. Obviously, the art doesn't matter here. It's just, you know, whatever we use. Okay. So, so we need some sort of randomization so that they get laid out in a way. Um, what I'd maybe actually do is... Uh, have 18 sprites and just assign them all to the correct positions and then randomly choose what art goes with them. Okay. Um, and uh, with this here, I, I would probably actually use the sprite data. Okay. So we could assign each card, type of card, like a number. Like let's say we'll say mushroom is one, flower is two, and so on. And then we could uh, randomly pick out of a list to assign them the numbers okay so does that make sense okay so we got to do that what else do we have to do yeah oh no you're well so we need some sort of way for the player to select which card they want to flip over right okay and so in this case that's the little glowing like box thing we could have like a, a sprite that just is sort of a glowing box that could be moved every time you hit, say, the right arrow, it moves it one slot to the right, unless, what about if you're here? Don't go any further, uh, but only allow you to go left and down and so on. Okay, so we need to have some sort of movement control to control the selector, okay? Uh, and then when you hit A, or whatever, over an unselected card, it should flip it over, which is going to be basically change the art that's attached to it, right, from the back of the card picture, whatever that's going to be, to the front of the card picture, okay? Uh, and then some sort of logic to say, have you matched something, okay? Uh, and if it matches, then what? Either leave them flipped over or remove them or whatever and give you some points or something. Uh, and what about if they don't match? Flip them back over, which is to say change their art back to the, the back of the card image, whatever that is. Uh, and then the play continues. Okay. So quite a bit of stuff to do here, right? Um, but let's just get started and kind of figure out how the heck we're going to do this. Um, okay, good. Let's just kind of get the, the, the idea here. And for tic-tac-toe, by the way, a lot of this would actually be pretty similar. Uh, because you would still need a thing that selects, okay? You would still need to, when you hit a button on a particular box, if that box has not yet been selected, then you need to flip the art to either the X or the O, depending on whose turn it is. The turns obviously would alternate back and forth between two players. Uh, and then what would you also need in tic-tac-toe that we wouldn't necessarily need here? You'd also need to have the logic to detect whether or not somebody has won, right? And how many different ways are there to win in tic-tac-toe? Uh, it's either eight or 16, depending on your perspective, right? Because it's eight ways for one player and eight ways for the other one also, okay? So, um, yeah, that's sort of a how do you want to count kind of problem. Um, okay, so kind of makes sense sort of the, the, the objective here.
Okay, good. All right, so let's go back and let's get started here. So what um, what are we going to need to do this? Um, we need 18 tiles. Um, now, maybe 18 is a little much for the sake of demonstration, so let's actually just cut the number down to, uh, let's do 12, okay, 4 by 3, which actually is the exact ratio of the screen, so that's kind of handy, okay. Um, and so we need some art, so let's go in and see what assets we've got that we can work with. Um, and why don't we just use the, the foods that are here, right? Okay, so we need a, let's do a hamburger. Sorry, do new asset image, and we'll go to the gallery once it loads, and let's do, say, the hamburger. Okay. All right, so we've got our hamburger. Let's do... Um, let's do, say, the ice cream. Um, okay, so how many of these do we want? If it's four by three, so 12 total, what would make sense? So how many different images do we want to have? Do we want to do two of each so there'd be six total? Because if we did four of each, there'd only be three of them, and that would be pretty easy. Yeah. Huh? Huh? Well, okay, yeah, but I mean, is there really fundamentally any difference between that? Okay, for, so for just for the sake of demonstration, yeah, let's only do three different images. Um, obviously, we could add more later. Um, and so, all right, so we did what? The hamburger, the ice cream, and why don't we do the pizza? Because this is Wabash. Okay, so we got our three images. Um, and so under, if we go back to our, our coding, right? We need to uh, have a function, okay, and I'm going to do, make a function, um, generate game, okay, and this function we're going to use to basically just lay out the tiles uh, and then start to randomly assign which one's which. Oh, and one other thing, what else do we need in our art our, our here? Yeah, something for the back of each card. Um, so for that, let's just do, um, I guess the plate would work. Is that all right? Okay, we'll just use the plate for the, uh, for the back of the card image. Uh, okay, so um, we need to arrange 12 of these things, okay? Uh, and we need to arrange them along the screen. So let's, we're going to have to create some sprites here. Um, and we're going to need to set, um, let's make a new kind and let's call it a card kind. Okay, and then we're going to make all of them um, okay. Um, all right, so what else do we need to do? I've created the sprite, but we also have to put it somewhere, right? Huh? Um, okay, so actually there's, there's two ways that maybe we could go around, uh, around that. So, so Sam's point, right, is should we actually have two or three different kinds, one for each type of card? Uh, that makes a lot of sense, actually. Okay, what's maybe a different way to do it that keeps all of the cards of the same kind, but allows us to tell the difference between the different types? 
uh, either the name or uh, we could actually use the sprite data extension to assign a number to each card that like if it's a type card of type number one, then um, that means it's a hamburger. If it's type two, it's a uh, ice cream. And if it's type three, it's pizza. Okay, or something like that, right? Um, and uh, yeah, we could go either way here, actually. Um, and uh, since I've already made the kind just card, let me just run with it the other way. Um, and uh, yeah, okay. So, uh, so now obviously if I run the game, I don't see anything appear. Why? Well, I did, I have and I haven't, but I've never actually called the function, right? So creating a function doesn't actually mean it executes. You have to actually also call it, okay? So under functions here, I would need to call generate game. Okay, and then there's my uh, plate in the middle. Okay, so, and it just spawns in the middle of the screen by default. Okay, now obviously, is that where we want all of them to be? No, of course not. So, where do I want to put this card? Um, okay, zero, zero is clearly not where I want it because that's at the top left of the screen and we only see a quarter of it, okay? So, what are the dimensions of our screen? 160 by 120. Uh, so, it's not a square, right? Uh, it's four by three. Okay, so, um, if this thing's at zero, zero, it's going to base the, the, where it puts it on the center of the sprite, okay? So, um, we've got this sprite, and at zero, zero, half of it, obviously, or a quarter of it is sticking out. So, what do I probably want to do here? And we may just have to experiment with the numbers until we get it about right. Okay, 16. Well, or actually, if we go into the asset view for the plate, what's the width of this thing? It's 49 by 24. And, uh, oh, okay. So we may actually have a problem here. Um, so what's, I guess, the problem we're going to run into? Yeah, they're not the same size, so we may have to go back and reselect some of the art, okay, or scale it up or down. So in particular, and I was kind of wondering why there was, so if we go back to the gallery, you'll notice we've got actually two hamburgers, so what's the difference? Yeah, the difference is that, that the, the big burger is, six, is a larger sprite than the smaller burger, okay, and that gives you, of course, better art with it. Okay, so let's actually... Um, go back here and let's change the um, let's actually get rid of the little hamburger and the ice cream cone and we've got the pizza that's a big one so that was 32 by 32 so let's pick the the large hamburger this one because it's 32 by 32. Okay, I don't know why it's being so slow this morning. Well, sort of, okay. What was the plates dimensions? Yeah, okay, so we, the 49 is gonna be annoying. Um, let's actually see if we can shrink this down a little bit. Um, there is a way to resize stuff. Ah, yes. All right, what I'm going to do there is I'm going to hit the little lock button down at the bottom. It may be a little hard to see in the screen. So what the reason I'm hitting the lock button is because I'm going to shrink this by making its X width only 32. Oops, that is not what I wanted to do. Um, let's undo that. I wanted to shrink it, and there is a way to do that, I thought. Um, so this is one thing that's sort of annoying about this editor, like this isn't Photoshop, right? So you have very limited ability to do, do stuff. Um, well, okay. Um, why don't we just use one of the other, um, here, let's just make our own for that matter. 
okay? And let me just color the whole thing, uh, just flood it with white. Okay, so that's a little, and let's, let's get rid of the plate. Um, oh, I can't delete it. Oh, that's interesting. Um, okay, so I've got the, we'll just use this blank thing for our, our card. And then uh, I also needed, what, the ice cream cone. So we've got the third type. Okay, so we want this one, the 32 by 32. I mean, I could have used the donut or whatever as the, the other one, but whatever. Okay. All right, so go back here, and let's see how it fits now. Uh, let's change this to uh, we want my sort of blank tile that I created here that's 32 by 32. Okay, uh, so if it's 32 by 32, uh, then the we need to move it to 32 by, well, let's just do 32 by 32. Okay, it's there, um, which is um, um, 32 by 32 is where the center of it is, okay? So if I wanted to, if I put it at 16, 16, that should make it like fit perfectly in the corner. Uh, but let's just sort of do the math here. Uh, if I've got four of them wide and they're each 32 wide, what is that total? 128, the total width of the screen is 160. So that's okay, right? There'll be a little extra. What about vertically? Three times 32 is 96, which, because we're only going three down, not four down, right? Which will fit because how much we've only got 120 in the vertical direction. Okay, so so that good is good. So let's do, basically, this is kind of the cheap way to do it. Can I just duplicate this? Okay, and then duplicate its position. And where do I want to put this one? Oh, it did because I was an idiot and forgot to change that. Okay, so it's right next to it, but there's no gap. Um, that's okay. Do we need to have a gap necessarily between each one? No, that's sort of an artistic decision. Okay, uh, we could and like let's so let's make it an, a gap of what eight. So let's make this say seventy two, and I'm just picking eight out of thin air. We can obviously tweak these numbers later. Um, okay, so then what I'm going to do is basically just duplicate this. Uh, how many times should we do this? Yeah, I'm going to have to do it basically six more times. Okay, and so let's do 72 plus 32 would be 104 plus another 8 would be 112. Oh, and this is card 3 that needs to move. Okay. Um, all right, so what's obviously the problem I'm about to run into? Not enough space. Okay, so I need to go back and recalculate. And so let's make this not 32, but say perhaps 24. Okay, that should only have 8 pixels there. And then we can subtract 8 from each of these. Okay, and so this would be what, uh, 64? And then this would be 104? Does that leave enough room for one more? All right, so I need to add 32 to this, so that would be 130, 140, 136. Oops, and that's card four that needs to move. 
Okay, eight eight more, so that'd be one forty four. Okay, but that one's right up against the edge. Okay, so what do I need to do here to fix this? Yeah, move everything to the left by, well, what's the gap here between the left and this this guy? It's eight, so if I can make that four, then that'll leave me four on the other side, and that'll be good, okay? So let's just subtract four from everybody's X coordinates. Um, okay, so that looks pretty good. Okay, now we're going to have to do sort of the same thing in the y direction, uh, which is to say uh, we need to, and this is a little janky, uh, could I duplicate all of this stuff? Um, uh, that many times? What would be much smarter to do here? Well, okay, a tile map would work, okay, uh, because then we could just plop them in artistically. Um, and what would be smarter here is to actually use loops, right? So what we've done here will create a row of cards. Uh, and so what about if I make here a function, another function, that accepts as input the Y coordinate? And so let me, let me make a new function here. Make a function, we'll call this make row, and it will add as a parameter, it will take in a number as the y coordinate. Okay, and we'll put all of this stuff in here, and then in generate game, we could call that function three times with three different y coordinates. Oh yeah, sorry. Okay, so if I if I go to functions, I need to um, oh hold on. We won't be able to do that. Um, so if you if you do sorry, if you go, go back to the functions and we say make a function. You pick its name, but then you can add a parameter. So just click on one of those things. Uh, and you can have as many parameters as you want here. Um, and those basically would be numbers that you could pass to the function and then, uh, yeah. Okay, so what's the problem I just sort of realized that I'm about to have? So if I call this function three times, what's going to happen? Let's just find out. All right, let's do it. Okay, so generate game, I will call in a loop. Um, repeat three times. Um, well, or actually, let me just do it this way for sake of demonstration. All right, so what's the first row? 32 high. The next one would need to be, well, 64 plus 8 would be 72. And one more, let's make 32, so it would be 104 plus 8 would be 112. Let's see how this looks. Okay. Where are the only four there? Oh. Well, they are, except, oh, because I'm also an idiot, they are all on top of each other. What do I need to replace these Y coordinates with? this thing, okay? And so what that'll do is take whatever the number that we passed, okay, uh, to the function and replace that. Okay, so there we go. We've got all 12 of them. Okay, what's sort of the problem though visually? Yeah, we need to move everything up a little bit. So right now I think we have, how many pixels? We've got 16 up there. Um, so let's let's take eight away from all the y coordinates and see how that looks. I did number, 
Yeah. Okay, uh, almost, but we need to take two. So this is actually kind of nice that the numbers are actually kind of match. That makes sense because it's. Okay, so does that look good? Yeah. Okay, so what was the one thing I'm worried a little bit worried about, though? I'm worried about the names of these things, because what is card one? How many card ones are there? I think there's technically three of them. Okay, that worries me mildly. Okay, it may turn out not to be an issue, but we'll we'll run with it. Okay, um, and there's a way I could kind of get around that or fix it, right? Uh, but this could be a potential issue, right? That. Strictly speaking, I've used the name card one three times. Okay. Now, uh, uh, the reason I did this where I called this function three times is, did I, I mean, could I have just duplicated that giant block of code three times and then typed in the numbers and changed all the names? That would have worked. Yeah. Okay. Probably not the way I want to go about doing it. Um, but, uh, but we could have done that. Um, yeah, okay, so what else do we need to do? And obviously we'll pick up with this next time. Uh, we need to, so right now we've just put 12 things on the screen, okay? We haven't randomly assigned which ones are gonna be which, which art, okay? For the sake of uh, at least initial demonstration, let's actually, um, well, okay, so we need to basically assign what art or which type of card all of them are going to be, okay? And then we'll need to have the th a selector, so I'll need to create a sprite for that and get the movement for it working. And then also get something like when you hit A, it'll flip over whichever card you're on top of, okay? Uh, and so on, okay? So we've got all of those things to do, right? Um, yeah, so we still got a lot of work to do. Uh, okay, so for Thursday, what I'd like you guys to do is to start seriously thinking about what you want to do for your game, your big game, okay? And, and I'll post a little thing to Canvas with like a text box so you can just sort of kind of, um, you know, give me a description of kind of what you're, what you're thinking about, okay? Gucci? All right, see you guys Thursday. And let me save this thing before we lose it, because that would be bad, okay?